Today, Mark will give us a preview of a presentation he will deliver to a local chapter of the National Speakers Association called Creating Your Signature Story. This is project number one from the Speaking to Inform Manual. The speech to inform, uh, speech to inform. His objectives are to select new and useful information for the audience, to organize the information for easy understandability and retention, and he's also, um, his goal is to present the information in a way that will help motivate the audience to learn. His time will be five to seven minutes. Please welcome Mark Eaton. Yesterday I was talking to Stacy on the phone and I thought that this presentation I'm gonna to give tomorrow for the Speakers Association might be a nice follow-up to the information she just left us about thinking about your story. I think all of us have signature stories, and I think, and as speakers, uh, and Joel will probably attest to this, we go around, we hear a lot, of, a lot of presentations with a lot of different stories, and some resonate and some don't. Some are well-told stories with great points that follow them, and others of them just kind of leave you wondering, like, where were they going with that? So my objective with you here today is to give you five simple ways to think about how to, to put your story together in a way that's going to be compelling for other people and give them something to think about at the end of, at the end of your presentation or even just a short story. <clears throat> My background, as I said, is, is I've been doing keynote speaking for the last five or six years on a full-time basis. And I've done it by taking the same stories and digging deeper and deeper into them and creating more, uh, uh, lighting them, making them come more alive both through the telling of the story, the construction of the story, as well as the presentation of it itself. And I did that because I've had great coaches in my life that have taught me the power of the stories, just like Stacy attested to. So a few things that I think we want to think about, because a, a well-told story is timeless, isn't it? I mean, not too long ago, I listened to Wayne Dyer, the great speaker who's written hundreds of books, uh, tell some of the same stories that I heard him tell probably 25 years ago in the same way, and they still grabbed me and, and, and got a hold of me. And I know I've had coaches and people in my life that were able to do the same thing. Every time you go and see them, you, you say, oh, tell me that story again about when this happened, because a well-told story is something that just grabs a hold of me. So the first thing I think you need to think about when you're telling a story is that it has to be intriguing. It's got to be personal, to Stacy's point, and it has to be intriguing somehow. It has to get you thinking. So let me just paint the scene for you for a second of how I open my presentation when I go out and, and deliver a keynote speech. So imagine you're sitting in an audience of 300 people and there's a big video screen behind you and you just watched two minutes of NBA rock and roll highlights, okay? Michael Jordan, Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, Dr. J, et cetera, et cetera, all with me in the picture, you know, playing, playing against them. I walk on stage and I stand there for a minute and I say to you, it's April, 1977. A man walks into the tire store where I'm working as an auto mechanic. And he asks me the one question I hate. Do you play basketball? <laughs> basketball was the one thing I decided I would never do again. Now, in that short period of time, what did we create? Did we create intrigue? Okay, you're interested to find like, well, how did that happen? Like, wait a minute. I just watched you up there. Now you're telling me you didn't want to play basketball? So we created some intrigue with that. So as you think about putting your story together, see if you can find a way to contrast it in a, in a manner that is going to get people to think. How did that happen? Why did that happen? What were they thinking? Questions like that that are going to relate well to your audience. The second point of it, of, of, of how to create a signature story, is there has to be some sort of unresolved conflict. You want to create some sort of dramatic tension. Like when you watch TV, you know, those shows are all about, that you watch like, you know, uh, NCIS and things like that, they're all trying to grab you and create tension somehow. How can you do that when you're in front of an audience? Well, you do that by simply painting a couple different pictures and getting people to think about, well, what happened in between there? How did, how did this, you know, how did that occur? How did that murder happen it's in case of a TV show? In my case, how did, how did that happen? How did, wait a minute, you, you said you were an auto mechanic, you hated basketball, and I just saw you playing you know, in the NBA. So 
is there a way that you can insert some sort of dramatic tension into your story to get people to pay attention to it? The third point I think is, is really important is to see your story as a movie. You can really slow it down, frame by frame. So if you look at the story I just told you, let's think about how we created the scene. It's April 1977, okay? That's the first part, so now you put you in a place and time. And I'm telling it to you in present tense, like we're there right now. A man walks into the tire store, so now that action is created. A man walked into the tire store. And then he asked me a question, the question that I hated. So in that very short period of time, we've gone through a, a, a period of three or four different scenes that you can easily follow along with as the, as the, the listener or the viewer that's painting a picture, that's building to something. He asked me the one question I hate. What? In your mind, you start thinking, what's going to happen next? So if you can break your stories down into small pieces like that, that will really help you. Uh, the, the fourth thing is that you want to make sure uh, that you, when you're telling the story, that you feel it. Feeling the story is the most important thing I can tell you. When you get up in front of a room, if I can go back into that space, standing in that tire store in 1977, if I feel it, you feel it. And that's one most important thing when I feel like I connect with an audience versus when I don't. I go back and say, all right, was I really present in that story, in that moment in time? So that's a very important thing. And then I think that the fifth item that's important is you want to give people hope. You want to give them something at the end of the story that gets them, gives them something to think about. So I tell another story in uh, the middle of my speech about an interaction I had with Will Chamberlain. When I was in college and I was running up down the basketball court and I was trying to catch, catch all these little short guys that were much, much faster than me and I couldn't get it figured out. And I was frustrated and I was standing on the sidelines and huffing and puffing and, and Will Chamberlain grabbed me and, 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 and so I make this big dramatic moment in my speech and he, and he says to me, you know, why are you doing that? Like your job is to stand underneath the basket right here and stop players from getting there. Like that's the one thing that you could be great at. And it was this big aha moment for me. And so I asked the audience, you know, how many of you are running around trying to do everything when there's really only one thing you can be great at? And if you're not doing that one thing, you're probably not succeeding. So now I've just given you hope. Okay, I've taken a story and I've now transferred it to you, the audience, giving you something to think about. Oh yeah, well, I really, I run around the house, with your, run around crazy all the time at work, trying to do all these different things when really there's only one thing I can be great at. So my hope here in this very short period of time is just to give you a few things that you can think about when you're creating your story, no matter what it is. And as Stacey alluded to, everyone has great stories. We all have great stories. It's a matter of putting them together and thinking about them. And if you do those five things, making intriguing, finding an unresolved conflict, seeing your story as a movie, telling it present tense, and feeling it, and giving people hope, your stories will take your speaking to that next level as well. Thank you.